These are segments inside a screaming frog, and I bet most of you watching this video have never used them. You may not even be aware they exist. Well, by the end of this video, I'm gonna show you what segments are, how to set them up, and how you can use them to save a ton of time the next time you do an audit. Before we dive into the video, make sure you head over to the seopub.com, sign up for the newsletter there where I send out tips like this every single week. There's also a free Slack community you can join. Inside the Slack community, you can ask questions, discuss strategies, and join all the ongoing SEO discussions. All right, let's get started. First, what are segments? Well, as the name suggests, segments are a way to divide and subdivide up the URLs on a website. Screaming Frog offers a ton of different ways to divide and subdivide these URLs. Some examples are you can segment by URL. So you can include URLs that contain a certain string or exclude URLs that contain a certain string. You can segment by pages containing specific headings. Uh, you can segment by what your meta description contains. You can segment by internal link numbers. You can even use the flush reading ease score. With API access, you can incorporate in Google Analytics 4 data as well as Google Search Console data in addition to some other tools in your segments. So how do you set up segments? Well, setting up segments in Screaming Frog is really easy. Before you do that though, you wanna to go to configuration and go down to API access and you wanna set up Google Analytics 4 and Google Search Console access. It's really easy to do. I'm not gonna walk through it in this video. The instructions could not be simpler. It'll walk you right through how to access your Google Analytics 4 and Google Search Console data. Once you do that, under configuration also, you're gonna to go to segments. And I have a few segments already set up, but when you wanna set up a new segment, you just hit the add button and select what you wanna to use to segment your data. We'll come back to that in a moment. So let's walk through the ones that I have though, the examples here, just to show you how this works. So the first one, I set up a segment and what you do is you, you name it up here and you give it a color. So I call this one difficult to read and I use the flesh reading ease score and I'm looking for articles that have a score less than 30. If you're not familiar with the flesh reading ease score, you can Google it. It's basically a score from one to 100 and the lower the number, the more difficult the content is to read or the more, more of a technical knowledge it would take to read. Like content with lower scores are more like technical manuals typically. Uh, content with higher scores are things that middle schoolers could read easily or you know, people with a fifth grade reading ability could read easily. So for this segment, I'm looking for things that maybe are a little bit too technical, too kind of complicated to, to read through. Um, you can also sort by URL or address, and I'm sorting by the blog. So here I have address, contains, slash blog. So it'll pull all the URLs that contain that. Um, this particular site that I crawled also has temp a template section. So I'm also segmenting all the templates. And they have a help center, and the help center is on a subdomain. And you can segment by subdomains by doing the same thing, address contains, and there's, their help center is on help dot, and then the domain name. So you just segment by help dot. Now you can also include segments within your segments. So as an example, here I'm looking for blog posts that have a low engagement rate. What I'm doing first, I'm including the segment of blog post. So you put segment is one of the options you can sort by, and equals and then the name of the segment that I created, which in this case was blog. So this is gonna pull all the URLs that fit into that blog segment. And then I use the API access and Google Analytics 4, and I'm looking for GA4 engagement rate. And then I selected less than, I'm looking for posts that have an engagement rate under 65%. Screaming Frog, list this as a decimal, so you put 0 0.65, and it's gonna pull all my blog posts that have engagement rate under 65%. This particular blog uses tag pages. I don't really care about the engagement rate on tag pages, so I added another option here where the address does not contain slash tag, so I wanna ignore all the tag pages. And one thing to note, if you do decide to use segments within your segments, the segments that you're including have to appear first above this one. So for example, I'm including the segment of blog. I have, that has to show up in this list 
before this low engagement post segment shows up. If I had this up here, it wouldn't work. So let's walk through. I'm gonna set up a segment here, show you how easy it is. So we just click the add button and we're gonna give it a name. Let's say I wanna look for uh, blog posts that have less than, um, less than three internal links. So I'm just gonna less than three internal links. And I'm gonna give it a color. Um, we'll just go with red. And what I'm looking for, I need to include the segment of blog post. So blog post equals, or I'm sorry, segment equals blog. And then I'm gonna add, add another option. And you can do and, or you could do ors, so you can separate things. We're gonna do and though, because we want it to be part of the blog. And I'm gonna go down here to in links. And I want everything that is less than three. So I'm looking for anything that has only one or any blog posts that only have one or two links pointing to them. Now, one of the cool things about segments within Screaming Frog is if you've crawled the pages, you don't have to recrawl them when you add a new segment. This is all data that Screaming Frog is already collecting for you. And when you create a new segment, it'll just resegment everything. So if I hit OK, we're going to add, we added this segment. It'll ask me if I want to, uh, it says segment configuration change. Do you want to re reassess? Wait, yes. And now if we sort by segments, so there's all the template pages. Here we can see, here are, our, this is our new segment. So these are blog posts that are difficult to read. They're included in the blog. They have a low engagement rate. They also have less than three internal links pointing at them. And here's another one's a blog post with less than three internal links. So you can keep adding segments. Again, all this is data that Screaming Frog collects as it crawls. And you can find a lot of this data if you, you know, go to the right section on Screaming Frog. But what this allows me to do is obviously I could alphabetize things in the URL section and I could see all my blog posts. But if I want blog posts with a low engagement rate, it's a little harder to see that data without these segments. So this just saves a ton of time. And what you can do with this, what I do when I audit websites is I use this to save a ton of time, uh, especially on larger websites where, you know, if there's thousands and thousands of pages, I can't read through every single page. But if I want to find pages on a specific section of the site that have a, a low engagement rate, I can do that. Yeah, you know, I can also look for uh, a specific section of the site that has a high exit rate using Google Analytics for data. Um, there's a ton of segments you can look through and I didn't go through them all, but just to show you some of these, you know, we did the internal links one. You can also, uh, under the APIs, you have all kinds of um, Google Analytics for data. You can look at the e-commerce checkouts, um, add to carts, all kinds of things you can add there. You can include events um, and specific events, page views, all, all kinds of stuff that, that are is inside your GA4. You can add some search console data as well. Uh, if you're using Majestic, you can you know, incorporate some information from that, page speed insights, and then all this other stuff. You can look for specific canonical link elements. You can look for crawl depth. You could, so you could, if you wanted to search for pages that are more than seven, seven clicks away from the home page, and fit into a certain other, you know, maybe blog posts that are seven clicks away, and you want to, you know, work on those to create some more internal links so that they're not so far away from the home page. You could use that segment. Um, you can use the custom extraction options that I, I shared in another video. There's just a ton of stuff. You can even do the carbon rating, which is a, a rating for websites to sustainability. Um, if you have a client that's, you know, conscious of, of that. So there's title tags, there's, there's just all kinds of things here you can, you can sort and create segments with. And the nice thing is you don't have to recrawl. So if you did a full crawl on a site, and then you think, oh, you know what, I'd like to see pages that fit under this, this and this, you can come in here, 
create the segment to pull those and quickly see them and identify them. Segments are just a huge time saver, and but yet one of those things that a lot of people don't even realize that Screaming Frog has. So that's it for this video. Again, if you haven't already, head over to the seopub.com, sign up for the newsletter there, and I'll catch everyone in the next one.